Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today I want to talk about carving and you may have noticed I put carving into a lot of the tools that I use and things that are on hand. Not because it's, it's amazing or anything special, but I like just putting a little bit of detail in there. And if you understand a few basic things, you'll realize this doesn't take that much time and it really doesn't take that much skill either. But if you don't have an entire roll of carving tools, I want to show you how you can do it with just a simple bench chisel. So let's dive in and take a look at how to do a simple Celtic weave with just a few basic tools. Now, first off, why would I do a Celtic weave? Well, number one, I like this design. I like the shape, and it's just, it's an easy thing that most people can do, and this is a great basic pattern that you can quickly jump into the project, and most people can do this really easily. And so that's why I end up putting it on a lot of my tools, different Celtic weaves like that. This was actually the very first thing I ever attempted at carving, and it's really not that difficult. This took me probably about an hour to figure out, and this one I actually hand drew, though most of the time I print out patterns. Most of these patterns, I actually just go to Google and I'll do an image search for Celtic weave and there'll be hundreds of these and I'll find one I like, I print it out and whenever you print it, it allows you to size what size it is and I get it close to what I want or I might print it out in a couple different sizes and then bring it over to the board and say, you know, which one actually fits in here. But what if I want it even longer? Well, one of the nice things about Celtic weaves is you can cut these at any one of these junction points and then throw in more weave in between and now you can extend it longer. So I can grab another one here and I'm gonna cut it in between the joints of the weave, and then I can stick this in in between what I had before, and just like that, we've got ourselves a longer weave, and I can make this any length I want, or I could even take out weaves and make something shorter um, to be any size I want, all the way down to something as little as that, or something as big as however much I can print. For adhering the pattern down, I like to use just a simple glue stick that I steal from the kids' art supplies. Uh, you'll hear hundreds of other methods and different types of glues and putting down painter's tape and gluing things to the painter's tape. And everyone's gonna have their favorite method. Try them all out and see which one you like. I like this method because it goes on really quick and easy and I can get to work. And it holds it in place nicely. When I'm done, I need to take it off. I can just use a card scraper and remove it. So it also gives you a little bit of wiggle room if you want to line things up and make them fit just right. You have a little bit of time to work with it before it sets in. We'll let that sit for about five minutes and we'll come back and do some carving. So for the actual carving, I have it locked in here between dogs so it's held onto the bench nicely. It doesn't move around much. And then I'm gonna actually start this off with uh, two chisels. So I have an eight millimeter and a 12 millimeter which would be like a quarter and a half inch chisel. And what I wanna do is all of these lines, I wanna make a bit of a V cut following all of the lines around. And that's just going to outline everything. And then at that point, you can decide how much you want to actually do this. Do you want to do some relief carving? Do you want to scoop in from the outside? I'm going to show you some of that as we go along. So for the V groove, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come along each of these lines. And for the straight sections, I can use this, hold it at an angle this way. And then I can come around from this section over here. Same thing, opposite side of the line, hold it in from an angle, and I just get that little chop out. And I've got a nice little line right there. I'm going to do that on all of the straight sections just with the big bench chisel. But then when I come to these curves, that really confuses people. Do I need a gouge? Well, no, you really don't need a gouge. I'm going to use the corner of this chisel and I'm going to come in and just work around the corner with a small bench chisel. Here's a closer look. I'm going to come in with the corner here. I'm just going to let it run along, Oops, let it slide a little bit, and work in from the corner that way. Then I can come around this way, and I can work in from this side as well, just following that corner. It takes a little bit more time, it takes a little bit of effort, but eventually you'll be able to remove that chip, and then you can come in through and just scratch it out a little bit. And you'll be amazed at how that good this actually looks when you remove the paper backing. Now I'm doing a really thin line here, and I'm actually sticking right to about the size of the printed line. Now usually I'm gonna make it a good bit bigger than that, but to start with, I'm gonna do it about this size, and let me step back and take a look at it, and then I'll know, no, I wanna go a little bigger than that. So then we can come in with this chisel, back it up a little bit farther, and cut it a little bit larger. Always remember, make it smaller, so you can make it larger in the future, because if you make it too big right off the bat, then you're gonna have all kinds of problems trying to make it smaller. So I'm gonna do this same method for a little while here, 
working in around all of these tight corners. And then I'm going to come back in with a V tool and show you how you can do it if you have something a little bit better than just a bench chisel. But remember, if you don't have a good set of carving chisels, you don't have a reason to not do this because you can just do it with simple bench chisels. And I probably did this type of carving for a good year or two before I went out and bought other chisels. So you've been carving with a bench chisel for a while and you're looking for something a little bit different, maybe something a little bit easier. I would actually think about getting a V tool. And so this is basically a gouge, but it is shaped like a V. Um, a very, very simple tool, but it will do this type of carving incredibly fast. So with this, I can just freehand it, dive in, and then cut along, just making sure not to go too fast or too far, otherwise I'm gonna blow out the other side and gouge out the wood, like that. What I generally do is I'll grab a small mallet or something of that nature. I've got this one that I made for the kids. I've got this one that I have a video I worked on. And then I've got a small Shop Fox uh, brass mallet that I'll use. So I can grab one of these, start it in here. Just with very light taps, this gives you a lot more control and ends up being a little bit faster. At least for me, I like doing it this way. Put it in at an angle, lift up the chisel so you're diving in go down into your depth, and then bring it into the cutting angle so you're riding that bevel. So at the bottom of the edge of this bevel is parallel to the surface of the wood. That way you're making the same depth cut all the way across. And then just run around, chasing these lines. I'm not putting much of any force on it. The mallet is just lightly tapping, just with a little bit of movement. And this actually gives you far more control than just doing it by hand, because each tap is only gonna move the chisel a little bit forward, and you can control that amount of movement very easily without the chance of it going by. But if you do want to learn the skill a little bit better, you can learn to freehand it without flying through the end and chipping out, like I did there earlier. But with a V-tool, you can make these lines very quickly and very accurately. I've actually had time with small kids. I can show them this, and in five or six minutes, they can do a pattern like this just about as quickly, because it really doesn't take that much energy, it doesn't take that much effort. And if you can follow a line with a pencil, you can follow it with a chisel. The lines don't have to be perfect, and you can see a lot of these are kind of squiggly and wavy, but that really doesn't matter. No one's ever gonna be able to see that. Just start on one end of a line, and follow it around, curving your body with it, until you get your groove. And just like that, we finished out this pattern. With a V-tool like this, this type of work is like four or five minutes worth of work to get this far. We could call this project finished right here and peel off the uh, pattern because we really don't need the pattern anymore. I'll peel off as much as come easily, then I'm gonna grab a card scraper and just slowly peel off all of these little bits and chunks. One of the nice things about doing it this way is you're right into your finishing step. So if you're done, you're using the card scraper to do the last finishing touches on it. Now it's ready for finish, you're good to go. But we wanna do a little bit more embellishment in this other than just this basic pattern. This is enough to make it stand out, but I wanna make it look a little bit more special than this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in here with the bench chisel, and I'm going to remove these small bits in between. Bevel down, and just work it back and forth. I'm kinda of rocking the chisel back and forth until I get down to depth. And I'm doing a bit of a relief carving here. Just wanna clean up these edges a little bit. Come in from the other side. And I'm just taking the surface of this down a little bit deeper. With any of these edges, sometimes I'm actually gonna come in here and trace the bottom of that V groove with a knife, and that will sever all the fibers so I get a really nice clean look to it. So just like that, and this is about another five, 10 minutes worth of work, we've done more of the relief work on this. And you can see how it makes it pop out a good bit more. And what we've basically done is we've outlined around every one of these lines, except for on the outside. So I wanna do something a little bit more on there. And what I could do is come in here with a small bench chisel, and I could make out small scallops like this, and just kind of relieve this outside edge a little bit more. Or what I prefer to do is actually come in here with a small gouge. This is a tiny little curved gouge. And with this, I can start back a little bit farther and I can make these scallops in the edge 
that just pop out a little bit more. And so I can do this all the way around, just keeping about the same distance away from the outside edge. And I'm going to, and I'm leaving these scallops here. I'm not letting those pop off yet. I'm just going to let them sit there. When I come to a corner, just gonna work it around the corner with two or three scallops all coming into the corner until I'm started on this. You can see in this case, I'm going across the grain, just making sure I cut all the way across the fibers, making sure my chisels are really nice and sharp. Sharp chisels are incredibly important, especially here. And if you wanna see how to sharpen gouges, I have an entire video on that. I'll try and leave a link to that down below. But we're just gonna do this right around the outside. It doesn't take very long at all. And then coming in after scalloping all the way around, I'm just gonna have a knife in here and let this cut off all those little fibers that were sticking out. Cause so I cut down a little bit deeper with the gouge. And this will just sharpen up that edge and make it look that much better. Get rid of all those little pieces in there. Something like this may look very daunting to you. It may look very scary. It may look like this is something that's completely outside of your skill. But I can guarantee you this will never be inside your skill until you give it a try. Try it on something you don't care about. Try it on something you don't worry, you don't mind about. Grab some poplar or pine or something easy like that to carve. This is walnut or cherry, very easy woods to work with. And you'd be surprised, giving it a couple of attempts, you can do some pretty amazing things that people look at like, wow, you did that by hand and that's not a CNC? It is a very, very fun thing to do. And this particular project, for me, was about uh, eh, 20, 25 minutes even with the video work. It's not my best work, but I was just showing these simple ways of doing this. It's not something that takes that much time. And if I were starting off, this would have probably taken me an hour. But if an hour's worth of carving like this into the body of a tool or something like that you're gonna be using all the time, that just feels good. It's something that is unique and special to that tool and something that just says handmade. Very, very nice. So if you don't have all of the carving tools, don't worry. With just a simple bench chisel, you can get in here and do very much the same thing. That's how I started. That's how these were actually carved. I only had a bench chisel when I carved these. It's not something that should hold you back. Now, yes, it is a lot of fun, and it does make things a little bit faster when you can get some individual gouges. And if you want to see these specific ones, I'll leave a link to those down below, the gouges that I really like. You're not going to find cheap gouges that will treat you nicely. Um, bare minimum is like $30 a piece. I think for my first one was like $35 for the cheapest V-tool I could find. They're, they're not cheap. So you are gonna have to spend some money if you want something like this. That's why a lot of times just using a bench chisel is very enjoyable. So again, if you do wanna see links to these chisels, I'll leave those down below. So go out in the shop, have a little bit of fun, experiment, have some, grab some scrap wood and just play around with it. It's one of those things that you think, I could never possibly do that until one day you suddenly did it. And every time you do it, it gets better and better and it's a skill that you can learn because you're just using a sharp edge on a piece of wood. And this is incredibly enjoyable. So get out there, have a bit of fun and try something out. You might be surprised at what you're able to do. I'll leave a link to a playlist with some other carving videos and things like that that you may find enjoyable. This is one of the things that I absolutely love and it is a great way to spend some time to relax, to enjoy, put on some music, grab your favorite carving tool and make something magic come out of the wood. Now this is basic carving. This is, this is a, a good way to get into it. There's a lot of things where you can start getting into relief carvings and some artistic carvings and other things like that. But once you get the basic idea with this, you will see that, oh, I, I could try this and ooh, I could try that. And the whole world suddenly starts to open up for you. So dive in, have some fun. Don't be afraid, just enjoy the process. Mistakes will come, but that's where you can put the happy little trees. So I hope you liked this video. This was a fun one for me. If you do have any questions, ideas, thoughts, let me know those down below. Also, if you wanna see the links to the tools and other videos on the topic, I'll have those down below in the description as well. If you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, and subscribe. All those things really do help out the channel and they mean a lot to me. They really keep this channel going, so thank you for that. I think that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. <laughs> This really brings new meaning to carving the turkey.